Welcome back to another episode of Talk Fast, Listen Slow. I'm Kat. And I'm Angela. And, and our guest today is Liz Edlick. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, thank you for joining us. But before we continue, we have to remind everyone to please like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. So thank you for joining us, Liz, all the way from Bahamas. I know. I'm so happy to be able to connect with you. And I have been in lockdown in paradise, but uh, it offers us a lot of opportunity this, this moment in time. How is lockdown in paradise? Walk us through your marvelous quarantine. Uh, well, I have a house here, Sugar Beach Villa, where I've lived for about 24 years. I built the house and it's on the most pristine water, just beautiful turquoise. And what I'm so grateful for is that I can be out in nature, you know? And so from the birds are swimming in the water and, you know, that healing salt water, it's just been a blessing. And of course, having my four puppies and rescuing a new one and having them run all over the place, at least it provides some comic relief when sometimes <laughs> things aren't feeling so funny. So it's been good. It's, it's really good. I, I get up, I do a morning ritual, meditate. I, uh, you're not, you know, because you're on lockdown, especially on the weekend, I've had uh, my had my trainer move in so that he wouldn't have to drive and you know be of course you know, yeah so I just I know that I have to hold myself accountable or I'm just I'll, I'll be rubbish that way so I've had that and it's caused me to do things like this and podcasts like our Get Radical show which I had yes. resistant to doing because I'm not a technology um, maven so now it just this time uh, gives you plenty of time to learn. So I am a student. I am a radical student. Well, let me say, I've been radically living my life vicariously through your Instagram <laughs> because that, that, that's, that, that Bahama scenery, Ange, so beautiful. We, need, we need to do a talk fast We're gonna go visit. from Bahamas. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We need to do a girl's slumber party. Every time I see Catherine, it's like, are you oh. coming to the slumber party? So yes. we're going to have to do it. We have to do it here and we'll have our, our whole wellness, a whole wellness weekend together, which would be a lot of fun. Maybe yeah. get some thought uh, leaders or what have you together. So. And talking about wellness, like how are you, you know, besides the meditation, what other things are you doing to keep your, you know, your sanity and, and staying healthy um, you know, with what you consume, because now in quarantine, it's very easy to kind of like lose oneself. And yeah. right. Yeah. I, we had a friend and I day tell us, oh, we've been, I've been eating a lot. And I think that's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. I, a couple of friends were saying <clears throat> meals become an event. You know, <laughs> what am I going to do for lunch? What are we going to do for dinner? What new recipe? Yeah. yeah. And so that is very true. I think for me, I've been, you know, I think in everything in life, there's always a gift that we can get and it's just that is our filter to look for the gift Mm -hmm. or is it to look for whatever is negative and challenging about it so this has given people the rare opportunity to have time and that's the one thing that we all have the same amount of and we scratch and claw and can't do this for ourselves we can't do that we can't have perspective and get up above where we we are in life to kind of reevaluate reassess Mm -hmm. and think about who are we where are we what lights us up what creates passion so i've been doing a lot of that and we're blessed to have the internet in so many ways where Mm -hmm. i can listen to a lot of fabulous podcasts as i did with yours which I really, really enjoyed. And thank you so much for, for bringing that information. It was, it was really a joy. So new information, new ways of looking at the world, self-discovery, um, the opportunity just to have a little bit of a breather in parentheses to say, where am I today and where am I going and do kind of what I think of as a radical reset. So I've really been doing a lot of that. I love that. It's one of those things, something that I've been saying is, and now that we're all inside, we have to go inside, right? So now it's the time to like, okay, what are these aspects of my life that maybe I wasn't really taking care of, or I was just, you know, living mindlessly like a robot because I have my nine to five. And now we have all this time where it's like, oh, those are triggers that I should be working on. Yeah. And I think 
Also, we, we do have, whether it's a nine to five or it's just a way of operating in the world, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes we can feel like we're hamster on, uh, on the yeah. wheels. So all of a sudden there's been a huge stop, a huge stop. And what that can provide is a perspective to say, how am I living in the world? What mm -hmm. am I enjoying? And am I enjoying it? Have I just been doing this this way in this particular job or with these particular friends because we're clo in close proximity or it's just the way it's always been? And now we have an opportunity to actually sit back and, like you said, be quarantined with yourself, mm -hmm. be in lockdown inside and say, how do I feel inside? And it's an amazing opportunity for reinventing ourselves. And so you know, in everything, it's our filter, right? And so we were talking, Catherine and I, earlier today about, you know, there's so much talk with the law of attraction, but what causes, I mean, what even comes before the law of attraction is a law of vibration. Mm -hmm. So how are you vibrating? Because how you vibrate is what you attract. So if you're in a state of negativity or depression or low vibrations where you've got to move, you've got to, you know, walk or work out or breathe or listen to a good podcast or something that can shift your energy because yeah. however we're vibrating because it's just all energy is what we're attracting so i think it's an awesome time to be able to really unleash and focus on like taking our taking our mind to the gym and in being very vigilant and using those muscles those muscles to inspire ourselves and awaken within the passion that that maybe been you know percolating beneath mm -hmm. you you mentioned earlier the word um radical which is it's actually one of my favorite words what does uh what does radical mean for you having a radical life being you know radical in society right now right now what does that mean for you i think for for me Radical is coloring outside of the lines, not living in a box, not accepting the unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Radical is about going above and beyond because you can. Mm -hmm. It's about stretching and being everything that's possible because this is our one life. This is our one opportunity. And in, in each moment, we have another moment. So radical is pushing boundaries. It's stretching. And it's creating a life you love. So in our book, Get Radical Secrets to Creating a Life You Love, that I wrote with my sister, we talk about radical passion, radical purpose, radical goal setting, ra radical visualization, so many things that, that really are a recipe. So if you think of, yes, we have radical skincare, mm -hmm. and the way you make skincare is to put different ingredients in, and then you stir it up, and it's antioxidants and reparatives and calming actives so you're not you know inflaming your skin and then a technology that wraps it up well think about your life it's the ingredients that we put in our life every day that bakes our cake and that is what we're tasting that's the diet we're on so we our mind is either it's a garden so are we allowing it to flourish and grow or are we allowing weeds to be in there and weeds can come in the form of our negative self talk our thoughts, the people we surround ourselves with, because of course, whoever is closest to us and whoever we're interacting with, this is why it's so blessing, such a blessing to be with the two of you, is exactly who we will become. So being and really trying to up level who we share our life and our time with, our mind space, our thought, our mental real estate with, really defines and affects the, the ex our life experience that we have. I love that term, the mental real estate. I mean, Angela, this brought me immediately to you as a real estate agent. I'm like, this is brilliant. Our mental real estate, like, yeah. wouldn't you want to own a lot of real estate, but that real estate being you invest in yourself? Right. 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 And what, in what you let take up space in your life. Right. So like, so a lot of the time, and I can say that for myself because I, I have bad anxiety. I have my anxiety is awful. And so what anxiety does, if you know anyone out there has it, and I'm sure they can relate, is this one small thought create becomes a huge snowball immediately. And it's like I have been working really hard actually, and Catherine and I talk about this, where I'm finding myself catching the thought before I let it get big. And that's exactly what you're talking about. I don't let it take up space in my life. I start journal journaling has really helped. So I don't know how you feel about journaling or what you do, what your self-care 
emotional care practices. Um, but definitely journaling is good because you get it out and then it's like on paper and it's no longer here creating mm -hmm. a condominium. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a condominium and all those little goblins that decided to rent space. Yes. It's, it's a drag, you know, it's like, Hey dude, what are you doing here? Cancel, cancel. You're out. Hi. You know, what about you? So it's one of the things I used to do is to try to personify whatever the negativity is, whatever oh, the anxiety brilliant. is. Brilliant. And so, you know, it's, it's not real. We make it real. We give it the power. We bring it to life. We animate it. Yeah. We allow it to have a life of its own and unfold in the most horrible ways. Right. And it can't live without us. No. I mean, we are, it's, you know, we're the avatar, right? It's like going around and, and uh, it's like a zoo out there. So it's like, you got to, whoa, wait, wait, I'm driving the train. Yeah. You know, look at it. I used to always say, okay, that little negative self-talk or goblin is on my shoulder. And I used to go, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I'm driving this train. I'm wow. driving my thought train and where I'm going and I got to get back in the driver's seat because a lot of times I'm sitting in the caboose going, how the heck did I get here? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I got here because I forgot to sit there and, and take responsibility that this, I'm the only one that can change it. You know, like you said, what, what's self-care right now? We are the only one yeah. in, in this world that can be responsible for the quality of our life, our thoughts, et cetera. So but I like the journaling one. My mom used to be a big journaler. I know it really helped her a lot. Or keeping a pad in your bed at night because you're having a lot of ruminating and, and thoughts to be able to just get it out so you can release and then get on to one of the most important things, of course, for um, optimism is sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, the quality of our sleep totally impacts oh. how we wake up, how we feel, the, and, you know, just the quality of our day. Yes, I personally this past week have been um, have had a difficult sleep pattern and it has messed up my week. Like this week I've been tired. I was just telling Angela, yeah. it's it's I'm exhausted. And when you're tired, you you also get moody, right? And that's the last thing I need to do right now during quarantine is to be moody. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know? and we also have to let it go. So yeah, if we're moody, if we're moody right now. Or if we've yeah. had a bad day or we didn't sleep well, or we're not feeling optimistic or we're, I call it um, when I'm being having uh, an energetic pig, pig pen day where it's like, remember like Charlie Brown and you had pig pen walking around. He had all yes, this stuff and yes. everything around him. And it's like all this stuff is sticking to him because he's just an yeah. energetic pig pen. I swear I go, oh God, Liz, you're being such an energetic pig pen. I mean, just yeah. like cancel, cancel, clear, delete. But forgiving ourselves is also yeah. part of it because self-criticism, you know, we can be our worst enemy. Oh, my God. And you know, it, it, can you only imagine if you treated a friend the way we treat ourselves? If we talk to a friend and said, oh, my God, you're so fat. Or, God, I can see you really aging quickly. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. I can't even Oh, you haven't done anything today. Look at that cookie you just ate. You said you're committed. You're not committed. What a, what a. So true. It's even that, like, I'm tired and I'm moody. And then you just feel bad because you're moody. And then it creates, like, you're yes. already on top of that, creating that energy space. You're so right. That needing to be kind to ourselves, is, it's so important. How did you start in this, this journey of, of radicalism in every way? In being radical. I, it's actually quite interesting because I was talking to someone, I actually did a, um, a podcast with a friend with my, of mine the other day, and we were talking about how where you start out is not necessarily where you're going to end up at all. Mm -hmm. and I think that's really important for this time because people are in reinventing. They're reinventing their life themselves. Their career may be changing. They may have been laid off. They may be just taking a break. They may now be working at home and homeschooling their kids. And like their aspiration was not to be a teacher at that moment, you know? Yeah. So there's all these changes occurring. And I started out actually um, in the, I, I was in nonprofit for a while. And then I became a stockbroker. And I didn't even like 
being a stockbroker. I didn't like the financial pages, but my boyfriend at the time, who was rather abusive and not really that great a guy, um, he was obsessed with the stock market. So I literally do, well, if I can't beat him, join him. So if I'm a stockbroker, maybe you'll talk to me and listen to me. I mean, can you imagine where I must have gone to like all of a sudden get into a career? I also did it out of sheer, um, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And my family were, they were having financial problems. My, my father, um, our father was a, a very famous reconstructive surgeon who also developed multiple sclerosis. So we had some severe financial difficulties and no one in the family, and I'm the oldest, knew how to figure it out. So I found myself rolling in my sleeves, becoming a stockbroker and becoming very, very successful because it was anchored in purpose. And I wanted to help others create a life that they love and have financial security because I knew how much that meant to my family. But I wasn't like passionate about stocks or bonds or financial pages. So after I became very successful at that, the passion kind of went away. And then I invested in a diet company. It's called the Six Day Bio Diet. Put over a million dollars in there with different clients and myself and maybe even more. And the guy that was the head of the company was doing drugs and just blowing through all the cash. And my sister was working there and she said, Liz, my paychecks are bouncing. So I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I had to go in there, remove the manager, do a shareholder derivative suit. Now, how would I ever have known about that to get the company back? And my sister and I started running a diet company. I'm like, what am I gonna do with a diet company? And from there, it was on infomercials and direct sales back in the day. And from there, we then did a skincare product and then a beauty product. And then the internet <clears throat> came to be and celebrities started to say, since I used to manage a lot of celebrity money, wow, it's the first time I get to control my image. So we started doing websites for celebrities and, and then also creating products and services for them. So. What started out as a stockbroker, you know, which uh, it, actually nonprofit, then became a stockbroker. Then because I invested in something and it went south, which was a disaster, I ended up owning it, which started to open my eyes to a whole world of consumer product marketing, which then got into product creation and merchandising for celebrities and the internet. And then Rachel developed rosacea. My sister had severe chronic rosacea and I just developed gravity. And so it was like, okay, we got to fix our skin. And that's how Radical was born. Because she had this very red skin, bumpy face. It was a lot of pain, a lot of, she was on uh, oral and, and uh, topical antibiotics with no cure for it. So since we had come from, you know, our father had created stereo strips and dissolvable sutures and, you know, we're deep, deep, deep in lab and skin healing, we went back to the lab and created Trilocell which allowed it to heal her skin and to change mine. And we said, after our father changed the landscape of medicine from a wheelchair, how can we just leave these products that have changed our life, our skin and that, that of our friends, leave it on our counter and not share it with others. We were never going to sell it or, or distribute it. We just mm -hmm. used it to make vats. We didn't care. And that's how radical we said, but it can't just be skincare. We want it to be self-care because how you're feeling on the inside is felt by the world. So if we're feeling, you know, if like going through a divorce or going through a life change or a relationship change, you know how you can see the light dim yeah. in a friend's eyes or in your own? Mm -hmm. Because it's how we're feeling inside, which is felt by the world. So we know that feeling beautiful and feeling good about ourselves is half the battle when it came to beauty. And so that's why we created Radical, which again, just goes to, we're all in the unknown right now. So yeah. What's the new world gonna look like? What's my new job gonna look like? Will my kids ever go back to school? Will I be able to have a relationship? Can I date? How do I meet people? Can't even see people. Like, there are so many things going on, but sometimes in the unknown, because we all know what we know, right? We know that we know that, but we don't know what we don't know. And exactly. that's where the magic lies. So to be able to embrace the unknown, where the opportunity exists, know that wherever you are today or wherever you were is not where you're going to end up. 
Yeah. So that's why it's so critical to set our GPS, set the coordinates of what it is we want in our life and start to see it as it's already occurred, visualize that. And, you know, that really becomes the fodder to, to generate that energy to create what it is we want to occur. So never started out as skincare and through different problems and adversity, it turned into this company and a partnership with my sister and being able to inspire and empower women and men around the world um, by adversity. Preach. Woo! So powerful. Well, and so inspiring also. I mean, I it comes it. to show also um, how that really is something radical because you went through, through, you know, having to help your family financially to becoming this, you know, powerful entrepreneur, right? And just out of sheer necessity. So it, it, it almost shows the, the power of adaptability as well, right? Resilient. I mean, exactly. That's in, that transition is insane and so empowering at the same time. Um, when you think of success, people feel like success is a straight line, right? Oh, and like, we know it goes like this. There can be highs and there can be lows and there can be lower lows. Yeah. Somehow, you know how in your life you go, that was the worst, the darkest moment of my whole life. But from that, there was this crazy gift that occurred. Yeah. So there really is resilience and adaptability are two key words because success is not a straight line and you have to make it to the finish line. And we never know how close we are to the finish line. So the key is to get off the bleachers, stay on the field, stay in the game. Keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving one yeah. step after another. I mean, the, 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 the magic truly does lie in the unknown. Um, with Angela and myself, we started this podcast right before this whole quarantine happened. And now we're improvising and adapting. And people have been loving the podcast. We are like getting requests of so many people that want to be part of the show, which, which says a lot, which means that people are, are receptive to it, that they want, you know, something new, something fresh. And so we're, we're riding that unknown, unknown wave. Yes. And it. it's, it's been fun. <laughs> it has been. And I, I love that you, all the things you were saying, it's funny because you're speaking as to the stage in my life that I'm in right now. I'm like digging so deep into that. And it's like, um, it's like an overnight four year success or five year success. You just like work so hard, nothing happens. And then because your mind shifted and you don't realize when it happens, but you do all the work and then your mind shifts and then things start happening. Yes. And it's not that it's just happening it's that you've been doing all the work. And then the universe is like the universe is, or God or whatever you want to call it is like, Oh, okay. It's you're ready. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's so what I love about we, how you share and, and the two of you share, and I noticed in your podcast, is <clears throat> you share a lot of your own vulnerability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's so much power in the naked truth because that inspires and empowers and creates the space for somebody else to just be human yeah. and be okay with their humanness because that's we give ourselves so little latitude and the fact that you can say, Oh, I've had anxiety or I felt, I felt lost and I, you know, I'm feeling like I'm in a washing machine or whatever it is, or, you know, I, I'm journaling to get things out or, you know, I mean, sometimes when you say, Oh, and you created, you're such a, a powerful entrepreneur and you've created all these beautiful things. Well, thank you. And I have created beautiful things, but I still always feel like that little girl that hasn't done enough, that right. isn't enough yet. I mean, yeah. that's the truth. Yeah. You know, that's the naked truth. So no matter how many bells and whits, whistles and homes and friends and celebrities, and I mean, no one knows better than you, Catherine, you're on the you know red carpet, you're you know sought after and photos, but all the glamorous, beautiful things. But I know when we were at, you know, we're always yes. like together going, oh, I just want to have a deep conversation. Yes. But things yes. are not always as they appear because we take that little girl or that little child with us. Mm -hmm. And that little child, you know, hasn't 
maybe grown it. The imposter syndrome <laughs> syndrome hasn't made yes. it grown, right. Yes. True. Like we don't feel worthy of the recognition or people are saying, well, you're doing so well, or I admire you. And sometimes you feel like, why do they even admire me? Like it's fake. Oh, they're just saying it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I've certainly, yeah, I've certainly felt that. And and the one thing that I love about you, and, and Liz and I, and connected, um, we met at a friend's uh, party, and <laughs> and I have to tell you, I, I was. Like, I feel like there's a story about that party, but we're not going to talk about it. It's fine. No, I'll I'll just I'll just talk about Liz and I. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and when I saw her, because I arrived before her, when I saw her arrive, and we, and I just looked at her, I was like. Oh my God. Okay. There's someone here. <laughs> and I, I didn't, and I stuck with her basically the entire night. <laughs> and then that with the rest was history, you know, it was like, like energetic, energetic pull. Because, oh. because for me, it felt like, okay, here's someone that to me felt like uh, someone that I resonate with someone that's not that people were normal, but someone that was like, I wasn't wearing makeup. I was just, you know, it was a casual party and, and I arrived and a lot of people were like with this hair and the makeup. I'm like, wait, did, where is, is I'm, I'm, am I at the wrong place? I thought it was just like a little intimate get together. And I had the same moment. I'm like, are you joking with me? I'm like, wait, the, the, housewives, like, the housewives of the OC threw this together. What is happening? Did we not know? I literally, I looked at my watch the second I walked in. I was like, um, this would be a five minutes. Hello, how are you? And I'm out. But then we had, and this reminds me of something in our book. We talk about the radical yes. Yes. Every single time you say yes, say yes when you would ordinarily say no. So the reason that we met is I was like, I am not going to that party. Sorry, not interested. I don't do that particular, I just... I mean, it was little influencers in really high heels and everything that was done up and fake eyelashes. And I was like, oh, dear God, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I said, yes, Liz, just say the radical yes, just because you never know the gift that will be there. And I remember um, my girlfriend, you know, I was when I was a stockbroker, I was always with guys, right? Because mm -hmm. back in that day, it was almost all men that were brokers. So my girlfriend would say to me, Liz, we're going to have a girl's party. You know, you've got to come to this dinner I'm having. And she was just all that. I was like, I am not. I don't do girls' dinners. I don't do the yabbity yabbity. Same, same. I, mean, like, I don't do girls' groups. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I like, I really don't pinky swear. I just My just, bitches. I agree with you. I, it is, it is a click and it is a weird click and. But I said, yes, she goes, and Barbara DeVore's son had a, an art gallery, her art gallery was in her home. And she's like, darling, please. And I said, well, can I come in sweats? I was like this petulant little brat. And I'm like, I am not dressing up. You know, I don't like to dress up. And she's like, darling, just please come. So I did. And I met one of my best girlfriends today that she didn't want to come. So it was kind of like Catherine and I, you didn't want to go or you were out. You were almost going to be out. I was just about out. And then we connected. I didn't want to go to this party, but I said yes. So saying yes when you would ordinarily say no, stretching mm -hmm. into the unknown, not you know trying to quantify it. I always talk about it like a rocket. So imagine we're here today. And imagine that the word yes, every single yes is another degree in change so where if i was to take off here every time i say yes it's going to change the trajectory of where i'm going to end up so your entire path can change based on the amount of times you say yes you stretch and you walk into the unknown I so I, I i'm already feeling better me too i i like that i like that what you're saying liz i think it's um, as I'm interpreting it, it's also just showing up for yourself, right? It's like showing up for things that you ordinarily would be like, whatever, it's not, it's not going to end well for me, but fine, I'll go. Just go and just do. And, and one of the things that I am learning about myself as well is that 
And I was telling this to Kat, I was like, I need to work on my bounce back time. <laughs> what I call the bounce back time. Oh, I like, like that. Right? Because, that. thank you. Because what I realize is that when something, and I'm really positive and I'm like excited and go and do things. And then That's something goes good. wrong. God, she's so happy about everything. She's so excited about everything. Anything she looks at, she's like, yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> she said, and then one thing goes wrong and then I'm just like, yeah for days and it's like the bounce back of like yeah that went wrong breathe it out and keep going and that's what I really need to work on the bounce back I love that I'm gonna I'm gonna use that working on the bounce every next one I, I start to go in my little my little energetic uh cesspool I'm gonna go up ah, time time for that bounce back time I yeah love it. right and, have, and having a, a little trampoline by the way helps <laughs> actually I, so I have a big trampoline in my backyard, but I also have a small, um, a small personal one so my mom can jump as well. And that's something that has helped me, like in the days where I'm like, just jump it off. Literally jump it off. Yeah, literally. Wow. The bounce what? back is real. Trust me, right. it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna help. Okay, we're gonna get it. Liz, tell us a little bit about your face uh, line, your skincare line. Your skincare, yeah. What makes it radical well radical well one i i couldn't have had the audacity to call it radical if it wasn't so let's start there it it just to think of it as the strongest skincare designed and that can be used on sensitive skin mm -hmm. because we have a technology and you'll see our skincare looks unlike any other skincare out there yes. because it's not white so just use your common sense and say all right, well, if it's a lot of antioxidants, we have more antioxidants per bottle than any other skincare on the market. So what's an antioxidant? Think of coffee berry, green tea, pomegranate. What color is that? Those are all dark nightshade fruits. So imagine you're making a cream and you pour coffee in it, you pour tea in it, you pour pomegranate, and if you stir that up, is it going to be white? So we don't strip our cream and we don't bleach our cream. Mm. So you get the goodness of the ingredients. So that's one thing. But it just as I'm sure you've heard with whether it's vitamin C or what have you, if uh, it's hard to keep it potent in the bottle. Yes. Right? So it dissipates. Mm -hmm. it's so important. So our skincare is wrapped in a bilipid layer. So we put, we designed it just like you would. Imagine you've got an eye cream and what do you want? You want to deal with wrinkles, dark circles, bags, um, and hydration. Mm -hmm. Done. And that's what you want. So what we did is we identified the um, we identified the strongest ingredient that was done in that was used, mm -hmm. um, and that showed results clinically in the shortest period of time. Mm -hmm. So that's what you would do. You would put in the maximum amount that's going to give you the fastest result for each one of those. So if it was for an eye cream, we'd have four actives for radical actives at the highest level because we never we didn't design it for cost basis we didn't design it for marketability we designed it to do the best thing for us of course so it's the actives it's the antioxidants and the recalming like uh, chamomile and we wrap that just think of bubble wrapping all of that to deliver it to the skin and we actually did it and this is what really made us say we've got to launch this we've got to share this with the world because we did a study at a usda lab and we compared our skincare to estee lauder clarins paracone uh, peter thomas roth um uh, Caudalie, you name it mm -hmm. and we were in many cases three thousand times more potent than those leading brands wow. and at the very least 300 times it's insane so when we saw that, we realized that, you know, radical, and one of the things I was sharing with you earlier is what you put on your skin, you absorb, just like water, you know, the quality of your water, et cetera. And you absorb five pounds of skincare in your body a year. Absorb it. So what you are putting- I'm trying to lose five pounds over here. <laughs> I know, right? That's where it's coming from. That's, That's why it's it. that darn skincare that sticks to you. But it, you know, it's as much what you don't put in something mm -hmm. that is causing irritation or what have you, as well as the quality and the potency of what you do put in it. 
So it's for Radical, it's making sure every single one of the products really act in concert, give you the Radical results that you want. And that's what makes it different. So it's our trial of cell technology and the intensity of what we put in there, but that can be used on sensitive skin. So we're, you know, the, some of the biggest areas, we've got Radical Rescue Kits for rosacea, mm -hmm. for acne, mm -hmm. for problem skin, dry skin, sensitive skin, and as well, just skin that's aging and that, you know, we want repair and, you know, have you love the skin you're in. Exactly. So it's all about that, making you feel better, empowering you and loving the skin that you're in. I've been lucky enough to, you know, to use the products. I'm in love with them and I have sensitive skin. My skin here in Los Angeles has turned sensitive and one of, I love all the products, but one of my favorite, I call it liquid gold. It's the CBD oil. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh my God. Tell us about that product, please. Yeah. Well, CBD is, you know, is also, it's of course a rage and people are understanding that the properties of the hemp seed, not, not the THC are so, so valuable for stress, anxiety, anti-inflammatory markers. Right. And so our CBD oil is at the purest level, but we didn't just put CBD in there. What we put in it is also anti-aging ingredients, so actives at the highest level. It had clinical studies for wrinkle reduction, for smoothing skin, increasing elasticity, all of that. So by combining the two, it was like an anti-aging one-two punch. The fact that you can just take drops, put it all over, and you know, follow with one of our serums like our youth infusion or whatever, you're pretty good to go. Yes. And and I like I love that. And you see results. I mean, that's the thing. Like if you have little, you know, flaking skin or, or redness. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is also important is because we're, we, we have fought for time so much in our lives, right? That anchoring rituals, anchoring mindset that matters is so important. So each one of our skincare um, items is actually has a self-care measure with it. So go back to the eye cream for a second. You're using that to reduce wrinkles and puffiness, et cetera. When you're using that morning and night, we talk about use that minute to anchor like a movie in your mind and visualize what it is you really want. Get emotionally involved with it. So see that future self, see where you choose to be, see the, the dream and play it like that movie during that moment of eye care, or if it's CBD and the hydration there, think of what hydrates and creates happiness with gratitude. Use that moment to focus on things when you're putting on your moisturizer, you're grateful for, and to train your brain to look at three to five new things a day. You can't just say every day, your dog, your car, your roof over your head, your, you know, that's like absent. Okay, fine. You get that for one day. Now you get three or five new things. So train your brain to look for the good and the gratitude in the moment, as opposed to looking for what we don't have in our moments. That's brilliant. So think, yeah. So everything in Radical Line has its, the skincare, which is multitasking and the self-care which reminds us to anchor the things that we, we know and we want to practice, but sometimes don't find the time. So right. I love that. can you give us, cause I'm super intimidated about skincare. I am so intimidated. I have a face wash and, you know, put whatever I find. And that's kind of my whole thing. I wish I had a routine and I'm trying to create one, especially in my mid thirties. But one of the things that I know um, that a lot of friends have the same questions is like, what can you recommend from the line for different, um, the, for the women in different stages? Like obviously for acne, there's that line. But for example, me in my 30s, what's something that I should be using that's good for preventing wrinkles and helping with pores maybe? So we have something there called um, the Radical Star Kit or the, the Discovery Kit, which gives you the core four products in the line that really will give you those radical results. And we, we designed that to make sure that people didn't have to try to figure it all out. Right. So yeah. one of the most important things I think people overlook is exfoliation. Oh. It's really, really important. So our expo exfoliating pads are one of our best sellers. Why? 
because you're able to remove the dead dull skin, remove wrinkles, uh, reduce pore size, and use the pads at night. It's not a cleansing pad, it's an exfoliation anti-aging pad. So you're able to remove to remove that dead dull, dead dull skin. So anything you put on your skin after that doesn't have to go through layers of, of dead skin. And so it works better, faster. Your skin is smoother. Any makeup you do use goes on. So we've got <clears> the <throat> exfoliating area. We've got our pads. And we also have like, let's call it a radical reboot. And we've got our enzyme peel or a charcoal peel. And that's something that- Charcoal peel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, right? So you just, you're rubbing it on, you're massaging it, it liquefies. And you can literally see like all, it's insane. All the impurities, everything come off. And all the dead skin. I've never seen anything like it. No. And right before your eyes, like within two minutes, right? Three minutes, you just see this dead skin sloughing off. And And how often should people use it? couple times a week because what happens is when you're using it and you've exfoliated enough you won't have the same sloughing off of the skin yes so I use that as kind of my boot camp Mm -hmm. you know just to give me a a reboot and then every night I use those pads and it makes such a difference and then I think the CBD oil Catherine you're so right the CBD oil is incredible and maybe following with the youth infusion but for people that want to you know, get radical and see what those results are in a very easy way. They can check out the start kit or the discovery kit and maybe add the, the CBD oil to it. And they're, they're good to go. And the good thing about the CBD oil, if you don't have time, let's say to do all these steps, you put on the CBD oil and you get the benefits of the hemp, the anti-inflammatory, but it also leaves your skin glowing. So yeah. it's, it's beautiful. I mean, you can even put your, your makeup on it and your skin still looks nice and and dewy and smooth and youthful. It's it goes with everything. Oh, send me twenty bottles. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now something else that's important about uh, radical skincare is that you guys have been very adamant of of keeping um, the ingredients, like keeping it very very clean, and it's cruelty free. Correct? Of course, cruelty free. Um, doesn't have parabens. Uh, our packaging is recyclable, so it, we're we we call it radically consciously clean. So it's, you know, I think that's important because we're all part of this moving organiz, organism that is the world. And the other thing we're doing, which I'm very excited about, is because there's been such a sea change in this world, unlike any time that I can remember. It, I was in your podcast, seventy two percent of the, the um, United States mm-hmm. lives paycheck to paycheck. Yes. This is devastating for so many people. And with the change and not being able to go out, it's devastating for retail. So what we decided um, to do as a company is talk about radical financial freedom. freedom. And instead of the, the um, revenues and the partnership being with retailers, we basically are going to take the partnership and share it with yourself and others. So that for people that are looking to, you know, create a bridge the gap, let's say, during this period of time and share something they love with people they love and be part of a movement. We're also supporting um, Operation Underground Railroad. Yes. So, you know, yeah, child trafficking... You know, it's not okay. And a lot of people don't even know it exists. And it's a $32 billion problem. And there's, they, they estimate there's 10 million children enslaved, not just for sex trafficking, but for organ harvesting. Oh. And so $3 a day can free a child over a period of a year. So our goal is to radically stand for an unchain these children to come home and you know it's just part of an entire circle right because the more you give the more we're able to share so it's it's clean consciously clean skincare we're using our company to share the opportunity and the wealth so other as opposed to going to a Neiman Marcus or Saks Fifth Avenue or Sephora it can go to people at home and we're excited about that. 
And so I had the opportunity to go to Tony Robbins' birthday uh, with Liz. And how did you get involved with this nonprofit? How did all this happen? I just said yes. <laughs> there you go. go. On and brand, on brand, Liz. It, it's true, but it's absolutely true. I said the radical yes again. And I don't like, Catherine, it's, I don't like events. I, mean, I don't do. I, do. I know. I'm the same. You're like, oh, I just don't know if I can make it. But I said yes, and I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And it was a fabulous night, and I learned so much. The other thing I believe, um, and so I had donated my homes, this house here, mm -hmm. as well as my Il Pelicano Beach House in Malibu to oh. Operation Underground Railroad to raise money. Because one of the things I think is really important is we, we all have different blessings in life. Yeah. And those assets aren't worth a lot unless you share them. So the more you share with others and love others, the more wealth you have in your life. And I mean it in that, what good is it if it's sitting empty or if it could go to a cause where I can free many children because of an auction price that we're able to to get so that's how it occurred i said yes and then i said how can i use what i have to empower support and inspire and i use assets and opportunities you know it's just you i'm sure you both have so much access and opportunities that every day look what you're doing now you're taking your time to inspire others through this podcast so it's that's all a contribution. Wow. Well, uh, in Spanish we say, a mí me consta. I mean, Liz is one of the, such a generous woman. I, I can't even say enough about her. I've lived it. I've seen it. And um, she, walks, she, she walks the walk and talks the talk. Or the other way around. She talks the talk and walks the walk. Listen, she walks and talks. She does the whole thing. And that's <laughs> I the thing. talk too much, right? <laughs> Who do I talk too much to? Never. And Never. listen slow. Never. I love, I love all this that you're saying and, and something that's like resonating with me is the, the thinking of abundance, the, the, the approaching life with abundance, right? So like what you do in the sense of I have and I will give because that's just a cycle of life. And I think there's something really beautiful about it. When people think scarcity, it's then that, that's when things do not come to you. When you're like, this is mine, I'm going to hold on to it as opposed to the opposite where it's like, I'm going to open up. I'm going to keep saying yes to things. And then the universe just repays you, whether it's emotionally or, phys or you know, financially in our, or any other way. And we never know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. So when you give, give deeply. Yeah. When you give, just give unabashedly because it may not come from that specific place. Right. But again, it goes back to the law of vibration. Mm -hmm. Who gets the gift when we are giving to someone? We feel good. Yeah. When we touch another person's life, when we have affected someone, when we have given, we feel good about ourselves. When we're feeling good, we're vibrating at a high, a high vibration. So what is that doing? That's attracting money. That's attracting abundance. That's attracting good relationships. And I really think this period of time when you think about abundance, it's also just in the quality of our friendships and our, of our conversations and our mental real estate. So this is a time that as opposed to just people being geographically close to say, okay, I'll grab a coffee or whatever, that we're able to reach out to people we may not have spoken to or seen or people like you're doing with your podcast that you may want to connect with and you haven't had time at maybe a deeper yes. level to explore things that not only support you, but you are giving in the process of your exploration to others. Now, talking about the podcast, we know that you have your own podcast. Tell us about that. So we, we have the Get Radical show. So it's all about, you know, inspiring people to love the skin they're in. And so interestingly enough, it isn't about skincare. It's all about loving your life and self-care. And when we were writing our, our book, our Get Radical book, and we were on the chapter about beauty, it was fascinating because we interviewed men and women all over the world because we launched in 17 countries all over the world and said, well, what's beauty to you? And we thought originally, because I was like, oh, I hate this, this chapter because it's just, it isn't what creates passion for me. 
Mm -hmm. Almost everyone to a one said, it's the way she smiles. It's the way she gives. It's the way she loves. It's her kindness or his kindness with other people. It's, it's her laughter. It's how her eyes light up. It's how she takes everyone in and loves them with her food or loves, you know, it's, it was always about what someone did and gave. That's where beauty lived. So with our Get Radical podcast and our show, our intention is to inspire and up level and create awareness for other beautiful souls out there that have a message and something to share and, uh, you know, make everyone's day a better day, whether it's a 20 minutes, five minutes or, you know, an hour. Wow, that's so beautiful. Um, I'm really excited about the podcast. Um, have, have you launched? Has it been launched already? We have. We've yes. Launched, and we're launching different ones every week. And so we're doing little short versions. But the, the uh, lockdown is a perfect example of how I've been so resistant because I, you know, I don't know how to set up the Zoom thing very well. And what am I going to do with cameras? And what, you know, it is actually because of it, it's given us a lot of ability to not have to have something so highly produced with the camera yes. and the crew and the lighting and the cost. So here you want to do something authentic that shares great things with the world, but it sometimes becomes very cost prohibitive. Mm-hmm. And this has been a great equalizer to allow people to share unabashedly, have that time and just show up. So for the okay. radical show, I've made plenty of excuses and procrastinated and all of those things. I'm not enough. Who cares what I think? Who cares? Who I, I mean, do, why, why do I even think anyone cares? I mean, what do they care? I mean, really? I mean, I'm not even sure I care anymore about me. So it's like all that negativity. I wouldn't, I wouldn't launch it. And I talked about it and I did some podcasts, as you know, some of the people yes. and I filmed them professionally. I was more comfortable with that. And I didn't launch, launch them because, oh, I'm not sure they're good enough. Does anyone really care? And, and then being here, it pushed me and drove me to stretch and go into the unknown and be more about how can I touch another, not being about me, mm-hmm. right? I'll let someone else decide if, if, if that's, it's valuable to them. So that's like, whether, whether it's the book, I'd never written a book, doing podcasts, that's me stretching. You know, being in these environments, it allows us to grow if we, you know, if we harness that opportunity and see it as opportunity through that filter versus seeing as an impediment. Yeah, that, that really is radical. Just showing up for yourself, living in, in the magic of the unknown, right? And thinking out of the box, really. And done is better than perfect. Like, I think that's something that we, we tell ourselves because we're scared of criticism. At the end of the day, everything is the fear of criticism. And so it's easier to say it's not perfect. I won't launch it as opposed to I'm going to launch it. It's just whatever it is in life, whatever it is. Just let's, let's just do it. I mean, Angela and I had been talking about this podcast, um, <laughs> Liz, for about two years. Okay. And- so life happens, everything happens. She has her stuff. I have my stuff and the travel and work and, you know, whatnot. And then we finally got together like, wait, are we going to do this or not? Let's just do What's it. Happening? Let's just do it. And that's what happened. And then we did it. Well, actually, the day we went to Tony Robbins birthday was yeah. the day that we were recording our, our uh, first three episodes. Remember? Yes. yes. That's oh, why I arrived late. <laughs> that's right. That's amazing. That's so good. It's so good that you did that. And I'm sure you're receiving the gift because of the quality of conversations. Absolutely. That we're, you're taking a moment to, to do for yourselves, share it with others. And so it's, it's, it's divine. I'm so happy you did it. You inspired me. Oh, thank you. You inspired me. Sir, thank you for being with us. Me. Really great. Um, where can we find you on social media and your websites? At Liz Edlick at Radical Skincare, uh, the Get Radical Show on YouTube, and, you know, RadicalSkincare.com. So our uh, show is called Talk Fast, Listen Slow. So who do you, in your life, who is that person in your life that you like to talk fast to and listen slow to? I, I think I talk fast a lot. And 
I don't listen slow enough. Oh, I, you know, I think okay. that's actually, I do think I talk fast because I've got such a sense of enthusiasm and a love for communicating and a love for listening, but really listening slow is an art. Mm -hmm. It's something I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And so I would say any, like a Bob Proctor, you know, I, I listen slowly to him because I want to eat and drink every word that he shares with me so that I can ingest it and become a better person. So for me, honestly, I'm a, uh, I'm somebody that is radically learning to listen slowly because I think the quality of our listening can also determine the quality of our growth in our life. So I think it's a beautiful thing to think about and talking fast. You're one of my favorite people to talk fast to because we never get enough time. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like, okay, okay, ready? All right, you're being picked up here. Okay, what, what are the other subjects we had? Uh, too much, but I love well, I can't wait to get together with you. If we don't do it here in LA, we're just gonna go over there. Coming <laughs> radical at Sugar Beach Fellow. Can't wait to see you. Taking the next flight. Let's go, Ange. <laughs> yeah, boardroom, boardroom. Yes, uh, it's a business. It's a business trip, you guys. It's That's right. exactly. Well, Liz, it, this has been such an inspiring conversation. We thank you so much for all the gems of wisdom you've provided us and for the amazing products you guys created. Thank you so much for being here with us. We wish you the best on your podcast and. We, I can't wait to pick up the book, actually. I'm going to pick up the book. It sounds like an interesting thing to read, for sure. Uh, well, thank you. I'll make sure I send it to you. But thank you all so much for doing what you're doing. It's really inspirational. And uh, I, I'm so grateful to share whatever gifts that we have um, and share it with others. So thank well, you. Here's to living a radical life. Amen. Thank you everyone for being with us. Don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the notification button and leave us your comments and let us know what you want to see on our next podcast. Thank you, Liz. I love you. Love you too. See you soon. Thank you guys. <laughs>